Let us turn to John chapter 10. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter. Now look, very interesting this passage we saw in verse 2. Remember verse 2, uh, verse, sorry, verse 22. We read Ch John chapter 10 where he talk about the shepherds. Okay? And John chapter 22 is where he was in the temple. Now look at me, very interesting. Okay, now, I want to draw some thoughts here. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple area, especially where? Solomon Porch. Okay, now, we draw some thoughts here. Now, specific times and specific place are stated here. Are you seeing that? What was a specific place was stated here? Was a temple. What was a specific time was that? Phase of dedications. Are you seeing that? Now, I see Jesus participate in the feast. The entire book of John, you can read the book, entire book of John. I can actually journey with you. You can see the feast of Passover. You can see the feast of Tabernacle. You can see the feast of Pentecostal. You can see the feast of Purni and also the feast of dedication. All the feasts, Jesus is participating. That shows that you and I have some understanding that if our Lord Jesus participates, the means, then the New Testament believer also must participate. Many of us call the feast as the what? Feast of the Jew. No, the Bible says the feast of the Lord. How many of you have understood? The feast of the Lord means that it's something that is represented about Him. How many of you do that? The feast of Passover represents Him as the Lamb of God. Am I right? Within the Passover, the feast of Passover, there are three things that is right. I cannot break down now. And the, the Pentecostal, what was that? The Holy Spirit, where Jesus came and rested inside the church. And was the, the feast of tabernacle is all about the second coming of Messiah. But what about the feast of dedications? Many of us fail about this. The church are not bringing, bringing enlightenment concerning this feast. Maybe because they find that this was traditions. But let me tell you, it's not traditions. It's a historical event. And the, within the historical event, that your story and his story is embodied. How many of you understood what I'm saying? If you have these revelations, then you will know what is the Feast of Dedication. The Feast of Dedication, they will call it the Feast of Light or the Anukka. Are you understand? And also, very specifically, it says it was winter. And when will we, winter take place? Somewhere in this month. If you go to Israel, winter is in the month of December, somewhere in November to December, where the winter begins. So what are we seeing? The Feast of Dedication or Feast of Light or Anukwa is celebrated somewhere in winter. And just imagine, in winter, everybody would like to stay at home, am I right? It's a very cold, very rare people goes. But what is Jesus is doing in the temple in the, in the midst of the winter? Why you have to go to the temple? We need to ask the question, right? When you read the Bible, make sure you ask the question. That means he's honoring the feast of dedications. He's honoring the feast of light. He's honoring Anukka. How many of you are getting what I'm saying? Are you with me? Are you with me what I'm saying? Following through what I said? Okay, now. So what are we seeing here? We saw Jesus participating. And I believe that Jesus is honoring that occasion that was taking place in history. But within the history that is, was connected, his story was there. Are you with me? So let me give you an unfold that why, why it means that within the history, there was his story was there. Then you will understand where, why, why Jesus was going there and why he was honoring the feast and he was celebrating. And right now in days, you know, Anukka is celebrated from last Sunday and this is the last day. Eight days. Right now you go Israel, you celebrate this. 
is a holiday season for them. Do you know that? They celebrate that. Are you with me? The question is, why Christians are not celebrating? Because we thought these are traditions. Are you with me? Tibawali. Festival of light. It's a counterfeit of the enemy. That means enemy knows something about Anukha. But what about Christians? We are so ignorant about this. We are more gross in Christmas rather than Anukha. Are you, are, you, are you with me what I'm saying? Something the enemy knows better than you and me. Tivoli is called the festival of light, right? Am I right? How many of you know Anukha was called the, the, feast, the festival of light? The feast of the light or feast of dedication of Anukha? Are you coming where I'm going now? In order for us to understand the feast of dedications or the feast of the light or Anukha, then we have to go history. Let me travel with you history. Now, it's somewhere in 165 or 164 BC where there was an event took place in, is in Israel. Okay? You understand that? Okay, now. Let me share with you. When was the event was taking place? Somewhere between the Old Testament and New Testament. What I say is, finishing of the Old Testament and began, before the beginning of the Old Testament, the event was taking place. So that was called 400 years of silent period. Am I right? The Bible says 400 years silent period. It was a silent period where God doesn't spoke. In the midst of a silence, there was an event that was taking place, there was an equation that was taking place where history was become his story and our story. Are you, are you following with me? Are you getting what, what I'm saying? How many of you are getting what I'm saying? Okay, now, let us talk about the history. Then within the history, we can saw his story and your story. Okay, now, there was a man, a Greece, a Syrian king, anti, he was much anti over the Jews. Okay? What he does is that he invade Jerusalem in that moment. And what he have done, he killed almost 80,000 Jews in Jerusalem. 80,000. Okay? He attacked Jerusalem. He massacred 80,000 Jews and also he seized the Torah and he, he said those who read the Torah will be punished to death. And what he make, even those who circumcise, he will do what, you know? He will punish them to death. Even the mother, the willing to circumcise a child, what they will do is, they would hang or the crucify the child. That's what this man, this, this man did. His name is Antiochus. Okay, that's what his name. That's what I pronounce. Okay, he was a man that was violent, aggressive against entire Jews. Okay, what he does, he stole every articles of the temple. Articles of temples. He destroyed the temple. Do you know what he does? He make the temples, the chamber of the temple to become prostitute. Okay? He make the temple as a prostitute. And what he does, he make the altar of God where the sacrifice was done by the priest. He, he sacrifice pick upon the altar for his God, Zeus. Are you with me? This was the event was taking place. And entirely, there was Hellenic Jews which those who are much more mixed with the Greeks and they become more sided to him. Okay? Are you to understand this, the context of history that I'm talking about? I'm, I'm just giving a summary of this. If you want, maybe I might be working through this because there is something that is connected with the end time. Okay? I, I, I can't speak this today. Okay, now look at me. What are we seeing? Entire temple was what? Mess up, desecrate. All unclean, unplotted things, everything enter. So what he does, he put a pig on the altar. So all this is done, and in the midst of this, 
there's a man called Judas Maccabees. One of the, from the priest's line, his father was a man that was opposing this and he was, he was giving bribe by the, the, the chief man to say that why don't you give your, yourself and walk with others? But this man says, no, I will never. He stand for the truth. And what happens? This man went and went to the Hellenistic Jews, those who are compromising, says, why don't you do that? And when this man heard that's what he did, he killed the man and the killed the person, Hellenistic Jews, and he ran away. As he was running, he says that those who want to follow the covenant of God, follow me. And that's where Judas Maccabees rose. His father died, and Judas Maccabees is the one, a small clan of people, small company of people was coming against them. And the temple was desecrated for three years, unpolluted become worse. So this man was fighting for the Torah, fighting for the temple, fighting for what God has given. And what does God in supernaturally use a minority and what? Break the majority. And that's what happened in you know, the story of Gideon. How many of you know that? 300 men was actually defeating the God, majority. And that's what God, the God of Gideon appeared that. And you understand that? Small versus big. Entirely. And he defeated. And what? He took back everything. And that's where they did it. The feast of dedication. Dedicating the temple. You understand? And that's where, as they went into the temple, remember, let me give you understand this. This is a second temple. Why am I saying second temple? The first temple was built by Solomon. How many of you remember that? When Babylon invaded, boom, destroyed the temple, and all of them went, what, exile. In 515 B.C., where Zerubbabel and Joshua came and they were building the temple. And you read the book of Haggai, where Haggai was the one that challenging him and said, come on, build the temple of God. And that was the temple, second temple was built by Zerubbabel. And this is the temple that was actually, was desecrated by this king. Are you with me? Are you getting what I'm saying? Where am I going? Are you with me? Are you following my story? So that's what happened. So what happened? As there was no Ark of Covenant, because why? The Babylons took all the articles, they removed everything, and all this was removed. But there was a menorah in the temple. So when they went, Maccabees went, they saw the menorah, there was a flickering of light. How many of you know the Bible says that this menorah is supposed to be all the day while in the book of Leviticus? Does it God say that? It was flickering. And the flickering means what? It's going to what? Go off. Am I right? Because all is the one actually what? Allow the fire to burn. So the oil is about to finish. So there's flickerings. So what they what? If you read the entire Bible Old Testament, it must be consecrated oil, and the oil is supposed to be what? Created by the priests. That was a command in the Old Testament. Are you getting what I'm talking? So all this was be, must be done by the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the priest supposed to do the oil, and it's a consecrated oil, and it takes eight days for them to what? To make the oil. Just imagine it's a flickery. So it takes eight days for them to do. What happens? The first day they went flickery. The second day when is there. The third day when, fourth day when, sixth day when, eight day, eight days, the menorah was light. It was supernatural intervention of God saying to them that I'm with you. I am with you. I am with you. What you're doing. 
Are you with me? That's one of the way. One of the way that Maccabees win all the majority is God was with them. And one of the way that God was, uh, the, the menorah was flickering and it was last long for eight days is God says that I'm validating, I'm, uh, I know what you're doing, I know what uh, your intent is, I'm validating because within the history there is what? His story and your story. I'm never getting what I'm saying. And that's why they call it the Feast of Light. And that's why they what? Consecrate a temple. Entire temple was consecrated, dedicated, and it's called Feast of Light and Feast of Dedications. Are you with me? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, question is, within the history, there is his story. Whose story I'm talking about? Story about our Lord Jesus. Now look at me. Go back to John chapter 10, verse 22. Now, are you with me the history? I'm just giving you a summary of the history. As I say that one day I am going to build about all the feasts. Uh, God willing, next year I'm going to do all the feasts because... I think probably I want to do that. And within the feast, I'm going to show you the feast is actually resembling and significant Christ and the shadow of Christ and also about you and me. I will do that, okay? I wait, just be patient. I will do that. I'll do an in-depth study for you. Okay, can I do that? Okay, now, what are we seeing here? It's, it says that Jesus was walking in the temple. Now, look at me. Where, where he was walking? Eh? Solomon porch. Okay, now, Why? Now look at me, there is in the, in, if you go to the, those days, now remember this was the temple of Zerubbabel. And the temple of Zerubbabel was desecrated, polluted, and what Maccabees, what? De-eradicate, cleanse it, and all this. And, and the second temple was, in the New Testament, they call it Temple of Herod. Do you know that? Why? Herod, renovate the Zerubbabel temple. The Old Testament temple was renovated by the Herod. Are you with me? And that's the temple that Jesus is walking. Are you with me? How many of you understood that? Now, remember, that is, 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 is a story that. So, Jesus was walking where? The Solomon porch. So, if you go to the temple, there is the court of Gentiles. How many of you remember that the court, of, the, the court of Gentiles where they was making the what? He says, you have made my father house, house of robbery. That was a place where Gentiles approached God. They entirely stopped. You know, that's a significant behind. The church is right now doing that. The Gentiles are supposed to come into the church, but we become the hindrance that we make in merchandise. Are you with me? Okay, now, I'm not, let me not build on that. So what are we seeing? After the court of Gentiles, there is a place called the, the, the porch of royal and the porch of Solomon. This is a place, what happens? They will walk and pray, the Jews. Okay, walk and pray. That's what Jesus is doing. He was walking. What he must be walking what he must be praying. I believe that he is praying over the history, that history become his story in this moment. Are you with me? I mean, we get what I'm saying. So that's what David does. They will pray and meditate upon the scriptures, Torah, and what will that rabbis will walk around the place with the students and giving expound about the doctrine of faith, and all this will be done in this place. Are you with me? And that's why you see there was an, what an encounter that he had with the religious leaders in the verse twenty-two. Are you seeing that? Now this is a place, and Jesus was walking. What will he do? He will be praying. He will be thanking God for Maccabees, a man that was. Brave, that was so tenacity, press on. And I believe that that was history, but within the history, there is a story. Why are you telling history and history? You're not giving explanations. Be patient. Walk with me slowly. Are you with me? So what are we seeing here? Now, there is a man defend the temple, and there is a man that preserved the temple. Remember, if the temple is not preserved, what happened? Worship of God is being what? Distract. How many of you know the temple is the center of the life of the Jews? 
the life of the Israelites. When you remove the temple, what? You remove what? God from them. When you re- remove the temple, the sacrificial systems all break down. And all these are in the Old Testament until Jesus have done the fulfill the sacrifice. Are you with me? So the sacrificial was need to be done. So people have to approach God. It's a system of worship. That's what the temple was. So the Maccabees understand where the worship is removed, everything is removed. Am I right? I'm here when that's a man that was standing for that. He was standing for the temple. He said, this is a central, this is a core of our life. This is a core of the nations. If he is removed, God is removed in our creations. And that's why this man was defending over the temple. And standing. Are you with me? That's why he says, celebrate this feast. How many of you understood that? Are you with me? Following with me? So here, this is where Jesus was walking and I believe that he's praying, he's meditating upon what the occasions of the history. And as he was meditating and he was praying, and I believe that's where there is his story was appeared. How many of you know that? Within the history, there was prophecy. You know, the Maccabees event was prophesied by the book of Daniel. I can't go back to Daniel now. Then he spoke about what happens in the Maccabees. Okay? We can connect that. Okay, now. So, what I'm seeing that, the, the sacrificial have to be done. People approach for the feast supposed to be in the Jerusalem. Am I right? The feast, they have to go. All this was in the central of Jerusalem. It's a place where they touch God, worship God. All these are done in the temple. Are you with me? So, the Maccabees know that this is an important part of the Nations, how many of you know that, you, that that's important for you and me? The house of God is important for you. Worship of God is important for you. The once is removed from your life, that you are what? That's a great. How many of you understood that? Okay, now let me go quickly. So why? How many of you know that all the sacrificial was be done, but the ultimate sacrifice will be done in Jerusalem. Not only that, that's the moment they will light the menorah. You know, that time there was menorah is, actually they call it, I, 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 don't have, I don't understand the word, but it's a menorah. It is different from the original menorah. Menorah is actually one center, three either side, three either side, seven. But for this, they have nine. Center one, four, Four. Four for eight days. The center one is God presence that are light for eight days. You understand? Are you only getting what I'm saying? That was happening in the way. In the temple when Maccabees that. Are you with me? That's what it was. They were celebrating. It's everywhere in Jerusalem is light up. In the midst of light up, Jesus says, I am the light. I am the one that was giving light in the moment of Maccabees and I am the light, the true light is now shining right now. I mean, we understood that. He's relating the history to his story. Are you with me? That's why John chapter 1 verse 9, can we read that? Can we read quickly? Because I want to go very fast, some of the thoughts. Anyone? John chapter 1, verse 9. Who is the true light? Jesus. So everywhere is light. And Jesus is there saying that I am the light. I am in the what that happened in history. Where... He was, Maccabees was preserving the light. That is me. In the history, that's my story is there. Are you with me? And remember, you go to Haggai chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Remember, Haggai was prophesying, speaking to the Jeroboam, the high priest Joshua, and urging them to build the temple, the second temple. Okay? In that context, he says, Haggai chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Can we read that? 
The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the God of hosts. The glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. What he says? The latter glory of this house shall be greater than greater the former. Greater than the former one. That means what he's trying to say. Now you see this is a former temple right now. You're, there is a glory. But let me tell you, there is a, in the former temple, there is going to be another greater glory that is going to be appeared. That was Jesus was appearing in the temple. That was a prophecy of our guy that he was fulfilling there. How many of you getting what I'm saying? So Haggai says, the latter glory, that means the glory that is going to be in the future. I know there's a glory right now present that is in the temple as you build. But let me tell you, there is going to be a greater glory, latter glory, that is much more greater than what you experience now. He, that's going to appear that, and that's what Jesus was fulfilling in John chapter 10, verse 22. Where he was walking in the midst of the Feast of the Light, the Feast of Dedication, where the, the temple is dedicated, where Menorah is lighted, all these where he's saying, this is what I am. I am the letter glory that is manifesting here. I am in the temple that the letter glory that manifests. Are you with me? I mean, if you understood what I'm saying. So within his story, they, sorry, within the history, there is his story. So what is Maccabees was doing, he, I believe that he, was a, he had understood the prophecy of Haggai. He was battling over for what he supposed happened. And I believe that Jesus was walking, celebrating the Feast of Dedication. He was tinkering, thinking of a man that who understood the prophecy and engaged with the prophecy, fight for the prophecy. They allowed what did this event to happen. And maybe you understood what I'm saying. Are you with me? That's what. So he was, I believe that he was honoring the man. He was celebrating the peace. And he said, this is what? Within the history, if that history event that, that took place, the temple would desecrate. The temple desecrate, I will not be able to appear this time. And the man was there, was fighting for this temple so that he can consecrate the temple, set apart the temple where Herod would and renovate the temple. I will stand here and declare the prophecy of Agai chapter 2 verse 9. That's what John says. John chapter 1 verse 14. Be, behold his glory. So Jesus was walking in the moment of Anukka, feast of tabernacle, sorry, feast of light, feast of dedications. And all the rabbi, all of them walking, all of them discussing, praying, all this. In the midst of this, he's trying to say, come on, what are you speaking about in this feast? What are you talking about? Maybe the historical by Maccabee. And all this you're talking about within the history that I am the one that is. Are you understand? How many of you understood what I'm saying? A prophecy was fulfilled. Let me go back again. Within the history, his story was there. Within his story, is our story was there. What was our story? Jesus was prophetically, Maccabee was a shadow of Jesus that is defending the temple. That means in New Testament, you and I will be the temple of God. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says that. How many of you know that? And because in order for the temple to be established, remember in the Old Testament, the tabernacle was over the presence of God was there, the glory. And in the, in the new, in the, when they went to the, the, the promised land, the temple was built by Solomon. The glory came. Then Zerubbabel built the glory. And when the, all the, full, the, the fullness of the glory was dip, displayed by the person of Jesus Christ. And the person of Jesus Christ, let me, loud, his story, they become our story. And that's why Jesus died. He was buried, he resurrected. And you and I become the temple where his glory is resident inside you. So what is Feast of Tabernacle? Is a Feast of Dedication, Feast of Light. Anukha is significant for you. It's a place where you have to dedicate your temple for his light to shine out of you. His glory to shine of you. Are you with me? I'm going to be getting what I'm saying. 
Are you following what I'm saying? That's what he says. Within his story, it is your story. Your destiny is within his story. And within the history that his story was, that his story was our story of our destiny, that you and I become the temple of God. And where the Holy Spirit, where Jesus the Father is dwelling inside us, the glory of God emanate of us. And we are supposed to purge and we're supposed to cleanse our temple. We're supposed to get, give our temple as a dedication and allow the feast of light, the light of the world, and Jesus turned around and says, I'm the light of the world. Now you are the light of the world. I mean, we get it what I'm saying. Are you seeing that? So within the history, we saw his story. And within his story, I say hanging in his story is our story. Roman number three. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, we get it what I'm saying, yeah? Hello? Are you with me? I, I, I think it's now very clear for you. So when we are celebrating, we are celebrating a prophetic events. I believe it's a prophetic events that talk about imagery about you and me within his story and his, our story is there, within the history that his story is there, it's a pass on to you and me and you and I are the Anukha. You are the feast of what? The light. You are the feast of dedications. You are the anaka. You are the temple. You are the supposed to dedicate your life. You're supposed to consecrate your life. You're supposed to purge your temple. Are you with me? So the light will emanate of you. The glory will emanate of you. Where His intent will become reflex. Are you with me? Hello? Now look at me. Let me go back to the history. In the darker moment of the day of the life of Israel in Jerusalem, there was a man called Maccabee Rose. He became the light in the moment of darkness. A minority win majority. Bring the orders in the temple. And how many of you know Jesus was, I believe, the shadow of Maccabee, that greater Maccabee that's appeared, that's going to be what? Come in the moment of darkness. That's why he says, the man what? Saw the light. Are you with me? He was a great light in the darker moment of the world that he came as a light so that he will what? Consecrate a people for him that they become what? what? A temple of the Holy Spirit, a temple of God. Are you with me? In that moment. So that's the reason why Jesus died for you. So that you will be consecrated. So that he can what, purge you. How many of you remember in John chapter 2, he went to the temple to purge them, clean the temple. It is significant to what he's talking about. You and I need to be allowed to purge. So that we can be a feast of dedication. We can be a feast of life. We can be anukang. Are you understand the reality of what I'm speaking about? Now look at me. That was a darker moment in Maccabees' rise. Well, that was a darkened moment of history where Jesus came into earth, where he gave, brought light. And remember, there was a 400 years silent. The, Jesus break out the silent, and he came and he, what? he became the light of the world. And as he leave, he said to the disciple, you are the light of the world. Now you are the moments of darkness. So how do we connect Anukkah in these seasons? The earth is full of darkness, my brothers. How many of you know the pandemic has brought a deep darkness in global level? In the midst of you, Anukka is a reminder for you. It's a moment that is coming to understand. It's a prophetic event that needs to take place. That you and I have to surrender our life as a dedication, as a temple that consecrated, set apart for His light to emanate out of you in the moment of darkness. Are you with me? Are you with me? So now, let me go quickly. I'm going to use acrostic word. Okay? Light. So what are we supposed to do? I say it's hanging in his story is our story. Now I, say, I already explained the story. That now you're the temple. Then the glory is supposed to be. And so he, the prophecy of Haggai was not fulfilling the day of Jesus, was fulfilling the day of our, you and me. I believe that. The prophecy was not only connected with Jesus, connected with the church, because in the book of Ephesians says, the glorious church that is coming for. Am I right, it says? 
So the prophecy of Agai is doesn't only connected with the uh, Messiah, it's also connected to the body of Christ, which is where the body of Christ must become the glorious church. In the moment of darkness, that's why Isaiah says, Arise and shine. Your light has come. The light means, I believe that one, the, fe- the feast of the light, feast of dedication, that you say, come on, it's time for you to wake it up. Cleanse up your light. Get ready, alignment yourself so that you can be a light moment in the darker moment. Are you with me? And he says, your glory will risen upon you. Light and glory. I can build on that, but I'm not going to do that. So let me go quickly. Light. Across the So first, L, light of his word. I believe that this is a moment that you and I are supposed to be saturated by his light of his word. Because your light comes is, I believe, the word. How many of you know the Psalms 119 verse, verse 105? Can we read that quickly? 105 and 130. Come on, quickly. Oh, quickly. Anyone, anyone, just please help each other. 119, 135. 105. Then one, oh, someone, one, Your one, word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What is this? Your? Word is a lamp. To that means feet. your word is a lamp. And? A light to my path. Again, light, your light. So what is that? Light in the darker moments, you need a what a light to get direct the world like your life. Am I right? There is a darker moment in earth, everybody was lost, they does not know where to go. How many of you know the world is lost? They doesn't know what is the next decision to do. But in the midst of you, you and I have a light, light of his word where can direct your pathway in the season of this moment. But you and I are lost because we don't have this word. Psalms 130. Uh, sorry, uh, the well, same Psalms 119. Verse 130. The entrance of your words gives light. Now look at me. Entrance of your words give light. The word entrance means what, you know? That means entrance of the word, where the word will be unfold, open up. And as you open up, what happened? The root word is called, you know, it will free you, loose you. In the moment of where there's binding, the moment there is no freedom, but you walk in a loose and freedom life because of the word. Entrance of the word. And what he says, the entrance of the words will give light, right? Am I the word light means what? Illuminations. Walking in illuminations, walking inside where you have understanding. In this season, you're not perplexed, you're not confused, you're not coming into a place, you don't know where to go. But you are clear in your choices, clear in your movement because illumination is coming out of the word of God. <coughs> are you with me? And not only that, what is that? Entrance of the word, what? Give you life and also what he says? It gives understanding. Give understanding. Do you know what's understanding? In the moment of discernment. That means you will walk in discernment. How many of you know in this season that you need discernment? Because there are many harassments that's happening here. Many false things are happening in the midst of the church. But if you have, don't have a discernment, you does not know which is true, which is false. And that the moment of darker moment, that's where well, corrupting teachings and error teaching will invade in the house of God. But you need discernment. How you deserve discernment? When the word of God becomes entering in your life. And that's where you have discernment inside. How many of you know this is a season that you have discernment? Discernment in every area of your life. And not only that, distinct, the word, you know, the word understand means you become distinct. In the midst of all of them, you are different. How many of you know when in the moments of the plague was happening, in the area of Koshim, that was, everything was distinct. God says, I will make them distinct among you. That's what he did. In the moment of darkness, that you become distinct. We are different. Hey, what's happening? A company of people are all different. What? Nothing happens. A pandemic is not affecting everything. That's what I'm talking about. Are you with me? Okay, now I, I, I want to go to the next one. Next word. I. I. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. How many of you know the flickery of the, the menorah is because basically lack of oil? Am I right? So, in these seasons that you and I have to walk a deeper level of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. 
where the book of Acts is entirely about walking with the Holy Spirit, where you commune with the Holy Spirit, we become close, so intimate with the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit shows you, guide you, and says, that's what the Bible says, that He will lead you, and He will guide you. He is a guide. Am I right? That's what the Bible says. He's a spirit of truth. In the, where the spirit of error there, he's, He becomes the spirit of truth. Where He's you do no guidance, He becomes your guide. And He will show you the future, and He will show you Christ. And that's why you're communion with the Holy Spirit, will lead you constantly in the moment of darkness, and say, come on, this is what I'm leading you. This is where you're supposed to be. This is what you're supposed to do. All this was be guided by the Holy Spirit unless you have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Let me go quickly. What is the next word? Is G. G is what? Go and make disciples in these seasons. You and I must be launching out and go aggressively involved in discipleship. And that's what Matthew chapter 8 say, 28 says. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth is given. Go! Now is the time to go. Now is the time to intensify your disciples, groom people, strain people, equip people. Why? That's what he wants us not to disciple the church alone, but disciple nations. We have to come to that place where we can disciple nation. We can take a society, a urban, that way we can go into a disciple. I believe that's what God wants us to do. Are you with me? H. Harvest and harvesters. The Bible says, harvest is plentiful and workers are few. So it's a harvest moment. I speak about this. Harvest, it needs to be happen within the seasons. If in, over the seasons, the harvest what? What do we destroy? So Jesus says, it's a harvest moment. Quickly, there's urgency. I need to go harvest field. There are many people ready to see and receive Jesus as their Lord and King and they want to receive Him. And not only that, we need harvesters. The laborers need to go into it. You and I, and Pastor, I cannot do this. Then you are actually not responding in these seasons. Are you understand? Then lastly, as you do this, we want to, the offering to our Lord. What do you mean by the, the offering? Romans chapter 15, verse 16. I want to conclude the message. Romans chapter 15, verse 16. That I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. Now look at me. He says, I am a minister to the Gentiles, ministering to the I'm a minister to, of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles and ministering as a priest. Now look at me. He's talking about a position of priest in the Old Testament. Priest or, or priest of that. Read that. Ministering as a what? Ministering the gospel of God that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable. So what he's trying to say, he says that I am a minister. That means he defined that I'm a priest. Priest supposed to minister. I minister to the people, am I right? And offer the, he says, I'm a priest now. I'm ministering to them. How do I do in the ministering? To the gospel. And as I do that, so that, then, so I say, so that after I minister the gospel, so that my offering of Gentile may become acceptable and sanctified by spirit. Let me, Paul is trying to say, I'm called to be a minister to Gentile. I mean, I'm called to be a priest for the Gentile. I'm going there as a Gentile, as a priest, and I'm actually ministering them the gospel. I'm speaking the gospel. As I preach the gospel, as the gospel in my life, I, I bring them and collect them as an offering. I'm bringing back again to God and offer. How many of you know the priests have to collect all the offering from the people and bring back that? And that's the picture he says. I want to offer an offering. The Gentile become the offering. What offering that you and I want to give? Paul says, I want to give them the offering. The Gentiles. Wow. I have an offering that I need to give. A company of people that say, God, who has been sanctified set apart and say this offering. So then you saw, you saw that his priest's job is what? Minister the gospel. He is ministering. We have a God. How did many priests does that those days? They teach the law, minister the people, bring all that, and all they're supposed to do. And how? In the New Testament say, minister the gospel. Preach the gospel to them. As you gospel and you collect at them as an offering and bring back to God. So you saw a picture of a priest that you and I have to function. 
That means you and I have to be. So my question is, what offering that you are going to give him? Do you have an offering? I'm not talking about offering back. I'm talking about people that you are saying, God, you've given these people. I've preached them the gospel. I've not only preached them, God, I make them an offering, a disciple. Then now I'm bringing back to you as an offering so that you will use this offering for your kingdom. Question is, if I'm asking you, what are you going to offer? You have nothing to offer in your hand. Why? Because you're not serious to become a harvester. You never be harvest. You never do disciple. Never bring all these. All these are supposed to be done so that you can offer. My brothers and sisters, the day that you stand there, you and I are going to offer a company of people. What about you? How are you going to do that? So I've done the, the cross stick. L stands for light of his word. I stand for intimacy with the Holy Spirit. G stand for go and make a disciple. H stand for harvest and harvesters. T stand for the offering. Remember, the means what? The, not a offering. The. That means ultimately the global church have to offer the offering. The harvest, that's an offering. How the baby present the harvester, become the disciple of God. And so that they will become offering. Are you with me?